Welcome to the Startup Showcase. I'm your host, Scott Katoon. This is Technoid Live from WGN Radio, where Chicago's top tech founders and entrepreneurs come to share their story. Sitting next to me, Mark Shore, the co-founder of Strike Social. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Um, so first and foremost, we usually try to start off by like, what is the company? So what is Strike Social? Sure. Strike Social utilizes artificial adver- uh, sorry, artificial intelligence uh, to simplify social media advertising and to get the best price performance, basically. So you're telling me when I go on Facebook and I take out ads and I just circle randomly and I throw a whole bunch of money at it, it's not working? No. <laughs> but why not? Are there, but they took my money. Yes. And so you need to know how to tell Facebook or how to tell Google or how to tell any of these platforms who it is that you're looking for. So what Google and Facebook are really good at is understanding who people are, what they're interested in, where they go, what they do, what they like. But it's your job as the advertiser to let them know exactly what it is that you need, who you're looking for. Yep. Well, I think, here, so here's the thing. So I'll ask you. I've been meaning to ask a lot. We had Facebook at, we were at a WeWork event and there was a Facebook rep there and I meant to ask him this and I forgot. Uh, he probably would have lied to me anyway, so it doesn't matter. You'll <laughs> tell me the truth, I hope, Mark. Uh, so when I click on my preferred advertising model, I click friends of friends yeah. or friends that like page or friends of friends who like my page. Does that, that's not enough? I need more? It, it It's, sometimes it's enough. It depends on how big the audience pool is, right? So in order to scale a media buy, you can't stick with just a small audience pool. A, I mean, that's going to be very expensive to just focus there. It is there. very expensive. Yeah. And, <laughs> it has been. And your audience is elsewhere, yeah. right? And so you need to find other audience segments that are aligned with that as well. And so that's where we come in, especially with We have four years of advertising data at this point in time, and we've been able to make connections there to figure out, okay, those that are interested in this are also interested in this. And so we utilize historical data and machine learning to really understand what those connections are, and we start with a media plan. But once it's running, I mean, that's half the battle right there. Then you need to look and see what's working and what's not. You need to shift off the stuff that's not working, implement more of the stuff that is working, and constantly adjust your bids and budgets effectively to drive the best performance. So you can see how if you're a start, especially if you're a small company or if you're a large company, but just not really all that savvy in the digital media space, yep. you could see how having one person try to manage this would be quite a task, especially if that one person isn't dedicated. Exactly. And there's so much work that goes into making a media buy happen. First, there's the entire plan. So you have to do tons of research. You have to figure out which audience segments does your creative really resonate with. And then you need to implement the buy. And there's thousands, tens of thousands, could be hundreds of thousands of different touch points into implementing a buy. Because what some people do is they'll just throw it at a bunch of different audiences. The problem with that is that you can't really optimize. You have to get granular. You have to figure out down to the specific type of target. So let's say that you want to target music, sports, entertainment. Easy enough, right? Throw tech in there because we we also do that. Sure, absolutely. So you want to target tech, music, sports, entertainment, right? You could just throw all that in and then hope it works out for you. That's what we're doing currently. And you want to target males and females. You want to target people aged 18 to 54, let's say. Let's say 26 to 42. Sure, (laughs) on all different types of devices, right? If you just throw it out there, you're not going to know if one ad works better for males on mobile that are 18 to 24 that are interested in tech and beyond tech are interested in tech gadgets versus tech news versus tech events, etc. So you have to get down to that granular of a level with each of your campaigns to really understand what's working and what's not. Once you get down that granular, you can figure out, okay, so for males interested in, in tech events that are 18 to 24 on mobile, it's coming in a bit more expensive, but it's converting for me. So I'm going to push more budget there, let's say. I'm getting great reach over here on females aged 25 to 34 that are interested in pop music, let's say, for instance, with the separate creative. So I'm going to shift more budget to there as well. Other ones might not be working, so we're going to move budget away from there. So implementing that type of campaign, that can take hours or days if you have a human being doing it. It's also wrought with human error, basically, yeah. mistakes. Um, the mistakes that happen at some of these advertising agencies can be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, effectively. And so that's where our technology comes in as well. We automate the media buying process from start to finish, basically, through planning, implementation, optimization, reporting, analytics, and it's a closed loop because we then use those results 
and we funnel those into the next campaign, basically. So it continues to get better and better and better. So once we implement the campaign, artificial intelligence takes over, it's dynamically shifting and adjusting budget to the best performing segments, throwing away the ones that don't work, and you know, pushing more money to the stuff that's working, adjusting bids, you make sure you're not paying too much for something, um, and then or paying too little and not getting as much budget towards something as you should, basically. Yeah, so this won't come as any surprise to you, I, I imagine. <laughs> uh, I've worked in whether working with businesses from startup to very large corporation, all the way to politicians working as communications director, media director for them. Um, a very common strategy that existed was the I think I know my people strategy and they just like pick like they drew a picture of their friend George and then they just started advertising to people who looked and smelled like George yeah and then what ends up happening is when it, if it does work if they're randomly lucky like see, see I told you I know this is a snap and if it didn't work advertising on social media is a waste of money that's yeah. what happened every time it's very binary isn't it, it is it is it's so stupid because it's like they're literally I mean honestly there may not be there, put it this way: There are very few things that have more moving parts than advertising on digital media, because there's so many ways of consuming it, so many different platforms, so many different age demographics, da 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 da, where you're from, price point, salary, you know, like we talk, we deal with a lot. And so, one of the reasons why I had to come in here um, is also, I think, love to chat with you offline about about how we could be more effective, because, you know, we we deal with in the media world, we have to put a price on our listeners' head. Yep. And we have to look at people and say, okay, the average person uh, who maybe at WGN, let's say, and I, I don't, well, none of the older WGN people are going to listen to this show anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the older WGN audience member might be, say, 55 to 65 years old. That person's value that has been thrown on their head by Nielsen or whomever is the, the choice yep. has said that it's forty to $60,000 is what they're worth to the rest of their life. 40 if they don't live much longer. Sure. 60 if they live a little longer. <laughs> uh if you take the person who on the average age is, say, 36, and if you throw in some other factors, education, money, married, kids, da 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 that price can literally go up to two hundred sixty to 300000 is the value that they place on them, saying that these older people have already chosen their brand. The people who are younger have many choices to make in life. Yep. We can earn a share of their buy. And we have thousands, tens of thousands of listeners. And so for us, every one of those things matters. And when I go to an advertiser to buy on me and to sponsor me, I have to then say, okay, I want you to get that share of money. So I need to figure out how to connect them with me and then with me to you. And in between those three, which is very simple for right now, in between those three, there's probably dozens of metrics that are maybe hundreds of metrics that vary in order to make that connection happen. Yep. And to think that one individual person or social media post person, <laughs> who, by the way, is always an intern. They yep. always like the one of the most important communication jobs in the entire industry. And they go, it's an intern because, you know, my daughter's got Facebooks. You know, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, it's incredibly expensive to hire the labor that you need in order to implement these campaigns. I mean, when you're so then it's about, just easier to just be like, oh, well, it's nothing. then. <laughs> exactly. Right. And so, I mean, just to implement a YouTube advertising campaign that takes if you're doing it the right way, it takes many people unless you have technology that's doing that for you. So you multiply that by all these different platforms, basically. There's no way that an agency can staff up effectively enough to be able to do that. And so that's where you have to invest in technology to automate it, to, to really make yourself more efficient and effective. Because otherwise, you have to cut the labor that you yeah. need. And then you do what we talked about first. You just throw a bunch of money at it, and then it's either working or it's not. Oh, this YouTube campaign was great. We saw a bunch of lift. Oh, it didn't work. Well, what worked? What didn't work? Yeah. For you, Facebook, you know, is this segment working? And unless you know, you would never know how to determine the fact there. I mean, you might have, you you know, like, and this is one of those things where there's there's numbers embedded. There's analytics embedded in here. If I look at a, a Facebook ad, it's like, wow, a ton of people opened this one, but not this one. It may have nothing to do with settings and all to do with the video itself or vice versa. I mean, there's, yep. there's so many different things. So I guess why don't we kind of dovetail into your business itself and your background in it like how how what is the experience like working with your company what is it like for me to, to like if i'm going to run my own company and well, i do run my own company if i'm going to run that company and try to do this ad hoc with our interns uh versus i hire strike social to take care of this for me so we started as a managed service business and so still today to date basically you'd have to call us you'd send us over a brief you'd say here's what we want we want to target these segments you know these age ranges these devices, genders, et cetera, we'll put together a comprehensive media plan for you, which will be a bunch of different segments. We'll show you exactly what we're going to target for this campaign. 
you get back to us, you tell us, okay, maybe not this, maybe not that, we'll implement it. We'll then optimize it 24 seven because we have centers in Chicago, Manila, and Krakow that can literally watch it throughout the entire time, shift budget around to what's working and what's not, and we'll let you know along the way, this is working, this is not. You can then decide, hey, maybe we wanna throw some creative like this in there, right? Maybe we wanna try something new. At the end of it, you'll get a report, what worked and what didn't, but what we've been working on for a little while now that we're launching in three months um, is a way to fully automate that. So we started working on some machine learning models a couple of years back to help our media buyers. All along the way, we tried to automate the process. So we started with billing, and then we went to setup, and then we went to tracking, and we went to all the way through, basically. So what we have now is an end-to-end -end platform that can literally automate the entire process. And so we've been able to take a process, and we did the math on it. We're saving 25x time savings in order to implement the entire thing. And we're increasing performance um, that we're already typically about 30 to 50% better than the nearest competitor. And we're about 20% better than our best buyers as well with the technology. It's really hard to beat science. Yeah, that's kind of a tough, <laughs> well, and that's the, that's a whole other conversation to have on this yep. show about the, about working with using, you know, AI and things like that to, to advantage this. So, um, you know, I guess the kind of follow-up question I have with you is like, how did you get into all this stuff? Like what, what makes a person geek out over social media analytics? And I thought it was just a place for me to share pictures <laughs> of my puppy. You know, when, when I was young, I was really interested in, in mathematics and physics and whatnot. I actually almost went into um, electrical engineering, computer science, that whole world. Um, I actually started off in broadcasting um, well, cool. and in the content world, basically. I was, um, I was just telling the guys out there, I was doing a podcast for the Clippers and then um, was doing some stuff for ESPN.com. And um, I started to become really interested in how content went viral. Um, and so I started doing some digging, talked with some companies that specialize in that sort of thing. And the dirty little secret behind all of it is paid media. Yeah. Right? You have to get your content out to more people in order for it to get that organic traction. Correct. Right. That led me to advertising. And when I got there, I saw the power of it, but then I saw <laughs> the operations that people use in order to buy it. And everything was centered around essentially relationships and, and trying to put together pretty reports, but not actually on the implementation. And there was no efficiency throughout the entire process. So we started this about four years ago, and we had that singular focus in mind was efficiency, was what we kind of call operational excellence, right? So we need to make sure that everyone at our company was focused on everything that mattered and trying to make it move faster, basically. Um, and so we started building small tools, small tools, small tools, small tools, small tools, all along the way, basically. And we finally got down to an end-to-end -end solution. And that's when we said, God, why don't we just productionize this now? and turn it into an external application. And so that's where we're launching in August. It's gonna be software as a service. Um, we're still gonna have the managed service. Some people like it. Um, but sort of like the white gloves mm -hmm. kind of experience. But we're gonna use this as well, obviously. Yeah. We've been using platforms internally that have made us about 2X. I was gonna say, I feel like this efficient. is probably a, a tool that you're regardless is used, I mean, even the managed services still is gonna use this internally. Oh, just, 100%. Yeah. I mean, it, it wouldn't make sense not to. Yeah, that's, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is cool, man. It's I, I'm very excited to see where this goes. Keep us posted on this. Uh, we'll be sending you this podcast so that you can tell us what we should do better. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, man. Appreciate uh, it. But seriously, this is awesome. I can't wait to find out more about how to work with you guys. And, uh, you know, I guess where do people go to learn more about it? Obviously, Strike Social, but where do, yeah. where do people go? Uh, StrikeSocial.com for now. You'll see a lot. I mean, uh, we're posting a lot on our social channels on Twitter. I was to say, are you Facebook, guys pretty good LinkedIn. on social media? You guys, you guys doing okay? We job? dabble in it. Yeah. You dabble, just yeah. playing it. <laughs> awesome, man. This is great. Thank you, Mark, so much for coming in. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. You can watch this episode of more at Technori.com, download the podcast on iTunes, stay connected by following us on Facebook at Twitter at, and Twitter at Technori, or follow me at Katoon. Boom. That's a wrap. <laughs>